In this video, you're going to learn how to upgrade your iMac to an SSD. In this case, I will be upgrading a 2015 Retina 4K iMac 21.5 inch. The process is the same for iMacs from 2012 to 2019, also for newer 2020 based models that came preloaded with a hard drive. The process is also similar for the 27 inch models. This video is to show you how to upgrade to an SSD, not PCIe SSD. Those drives are different and more complicated. I can cover the installation of a PCIe drive on a different video. Today, we're going to work with an SSD. You're going to need four basic items. Number one, the adhesive strips. You can find these strips on Amazon for around $10. This specific package includes the cutting wheel, which is very important and is the item number two that you're going to need. Item number three is the SSD and item 4, a TA screwdriver. You will also need a T10 screwdriver, which is optional. You'll see why in a few minutes. If you want to see the difference in speed that an SSD drive makes, I will leave a link in the description below so you can see the performance before and after the upgrade. Okay, let's get started. Grab the cutting wheel and put it in between the glass and the aluminum frame. This tool is specially designed to fit perfectly without any problems. Once it is inside, it starts sliding back and forth all around the edges. The wheel will be separating the adhesive from the screen and the aluminum body. The adhesive is not too hard and the wheel does a very good job removing it. This is the most delicate part of upgrading your iMac, so take your time and make sure to do it slow. You don't want to break the expensive glass of your iMac. The cutting wheel does all the hard work for you. Don't push too hard, you just need to slide back and forth and be very patient. Once the screen is apart from the aluminum body, pull the screen away from the aluminum frame just a few inches and you'll see two connectors, one on the top and another one on the bottom. The top connector pull it back and it will disconnect. The bottom one, you need to first pull up the little security tab and pull the connector back to disconnect. Now you can cut the bottom adhesive using the cutting wheel and the screen will be removed. Here we have the hard drive. To be able to remove it, you need to remove four screws. Grab your TA screwdriver and remove them. Pay attention to the placement of each screw because they are different sizes. You can now remove the hard drive. The hard drive comes with these rubber pieces that hold it in place. We're going to use the same pieces to install the SSD. The SSD and the hard drive are the same size. You should not have any problems to install the rubber pieces and put it back in its original location. To connect the SSD is a little bit difficult because there is not that much space to grab the connector and make a secure connection. Here is where the optional T10 screwdriver comes in handy. You can loosen the two screws on the speaker to have some extra room. It took me a few minutes to connect it but I was able to make the connection. Make sure everything is connected right and put the screws back. This is a good moment to clean the interior components. Mine wasn't too bad but I decided to do a light cleaning just in case. The next step is to prepare the aluminum frame to put the new adhesive strips. Remove the remindings of the old adhesive strips and clean the frame. Your new strips should be marked with numbers. In my case, the listing on Amazon had a diagram that was useful to know exactly where to put each strip. It doesn't matter where you buy these strips, they should come marked and with a diagram. Okay, now that you put the strips on the frame, here is a very important tip that I am going to give you. The adhesive strips are just like double-sided tape. Do not peel off the protective film that is facing the screen. Do not do it just yet. Put the screen back on its place, put a piece of painter's tape on the bottom of the screen and make sure it is aligned. Now connect the back connectors to the motherboard. Add a few extra pieces of tape to secure the screen. We need to make sure everything is working before peeling off the protective film on the adhesive strips. If you put everything back together and later realize that something is not working, you're going to have a hard time removing the strips and doing the steps all over again. My pro tip for you is to check everything and install the OS X on your Mac. Once you are 100% sure that everything is working fine, you can now peel off the protective film on the adhesive strips and that's it. Clean the screen, set it up and you're done. If this video was helpful, click the like button and subscribe.